Hi students. So today we are going to consider plant tissue and anatomy. So basically we are going to consider a plant tissue and anatomy of a flowering plant. So moreover you are aware about that we have considered a morphology of flowering plant. So similarly here we are going to consider a anatomy of a flowering plant. So what exactly anatomy means? So anatomy means study of internal structure of a plant parts. So whichever the plant part will form, so they will be formed by their internal organization, and we have to consider that internal organization. So in morphology, you have consider external morphology of that particular plant part, and here in anatomy, you have to consider internal organization of that particular part. It means ultimately you are going to study a histology of that particular part. How that part will be internally formed in morphology? You have to consider how that part will look. How that part will have shape, size, and everything. Here you have to consider internal organization of that particular part, and we consider it as the anatomy. So, father of anatomy is considered as Bru, Neymar Bru. He is considered as the father of anatomy, plant anatomy, more. And in plant anatomy, so you will observe a different type of tissues. Different type of tissues will form by having organization of each group of cell. So, what exactly the word tissue means? So, tissue is a group of cell which have common origin, which have common function, and which have a identical structure. So, the such a cell which will possess a identical uh, structure, then identical or other common function, they will perform a common function, and they will have common origin. As they are going to perform common function, it means they will have a uh, origin common. So such a group of cell is considered as tissue. So organization of a group of cell which have common origin, common function, and they are structurally identical. Such a group is considered as tissue. So why in plant? So there are two type of tissues are present. That is a meristematic tissue and a permanent tissue. So these two tissue will comprise in all the parts of Your angiosperm. So entirely, the plant body will develop uh, from meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. So how these two tissues has been differentiated in angiosperm? So basically, meristematic tissue and permanent tissue are differentiated in angiosperm on the basis of a single thing. That is, here meristematic cells has a ability to divide. The cell which has ability to divide. is considered as a meristematic tissue and the cell which has lost their ability to divide is considered as a permanent tissue means a group of cell which has ability to divide is considered as a meristematic tissue and the group of cell which has lost their ability to divide is considered as permanent tissue so this is small discrimination but this discrimination makes it significant in anatomy so here meristematic tissue is considered or the definition of meristematic tissue we can consider that meristem is a group of cell which are which are small immature and isodiametric cell which has ability to divide or which is capable to divide such a group of cell is considered as a meristematic cell and meristematic tissue is more or most important in the plant because this tissue is going to produce a new cell this tissue is going to produce a new cell in the plant So this means, so meristematic tissue is considered to be primary tissue of the plant body. From this tissue, we will see development of permanent tissue. Suppose we have this much meristematic cell, and out of this meristematic cell, only single cell has lost its ability to divide. Suppose this cell has lost its ability to divide. Now this cell will not be used for formation of new cell. This cell has lost its ability to divide. It means this cell will not be able to produce new cell. So now onward, we are going to consider this as a permanent tissue. Now onward, we consider this meristematic cell as a permanent tissue, and the meristematic cell is getting converted to permanent tissue. Whichever the meristematic cell is going to convert, or uh, whichever the meristematic cell is going to have a status of a permanent tissue, this process. 
of making a meristematic cell to permanent cell is considered as a differentiation. This process we consider as it as a differentiation. So differentiation is a process in which a meristematic cell will lose its undifferentiated nature to form a differentiated cell that is a permanent cell. So here the process of differentiation will make a permanent tissue from meristematic tissue. So this process is most important and in uh, plant tissue culture uh, in enhancement in food product uh, while considering plant tissue culture you are going to see entirely this differentiation and here also we consider it. So meristematic cells are considered to be the fundamental cells of plant body which is going to produce a new cell in the plant. So this permanent tissue is considered as the similar tissue which has only lost its ability to divide. Means the meristematic cell which has lost its ability to divide as, are going to consider as a permanent tissue. Is there? Now, we have to consider meristematic tissue. We will uh, consider its character, uh, characteristic letter, but first of all, we will consider the classification of meristematic tissue. So, we will classify meristematic tissue on three different criteria we have. So, first, we will classify meristematic tissue on the basis of its origin and development. Origin and we can consider it as a development. So, we will consider meristematic tissue on the basis of its origin and Development. Second, we consider meristematic tissue on the basis of its position, means where exactly that tissue will be located in the plant body. And the third thing, we consider uh, meristematic tissue on the basis of its function. See, meristematic tissue is primarily present where it, it will present in the plant body. So, wherever the plant will grow in, or we consider in, in uh, area of growing part, your meristematic tissue will definitely remain present because it is going to cause the growth of a plant. So here, first of all, we consider a classification of meristematic tissue on the basis of its origin and development. On the basis of origin and development, we consider three different type of meristem. That is primary, uh, primordial meristem or pro meristem or this meristem is considered as embryonic meristem. The meristem which is present in the plant body since the beginning of life. It means the life begins, the plant life begins after germination. but that life reside in the seed. So, as we have considered, inside a seed, there is a presence of plumule and radical. And in plumule and radical, plumule and radical are considered to be the growing point. So, in plumule and radical, we have considered there is a presence of meristematic tissue. So, this meristematic tissue is present in the plant since the embryonic development. Means, before plant has germinated inside a seed, these meristematic tissue were present. And this meristematic tissue, which is present, uh, while in embryonic stage is considered as primordial meristem or pro meristem or embryonic meristem. The meristem which present inside a plant or inside a seed in its plumule and radical is going to consider as primordial meristem, pro meristem and embryonic meristem. Now second, the meristem which is present in the plant since the beginning of germination means while you will sow the seed in the soil. So that time your plumule will come out and radical will come out. That then after this plumule will develop into shoot and radical will develop into root. So at the tip of shoot and at the tip of root there will be presence of your meristem. So these meristems are considered as primary meristem. The meristem which are present at the shoot tip and root tip means they are also present since the beginning of germination or since the beginning of plant life. So here these two tissue are considered as a primary tissue, primary meristem. So primordial meristem is present since the embryonic development means it will be present in the seed. And primary meristem, after having germination of seed, your plumule and radical will come out. They will later on differentiate into root and shoot. So at the tip of root and shoot, these meristem are considered as primary meristem. So definitely, primary meristem has going to produce from, or rather, they are produced from your primordial meristem or pro meristem or embryonic meristem. Then after we consider secondary meristem. So this secondary meristem is not present in the plant since the beginning of life of a plant. So they will come later while considering or if uh, they need to develop a new part. So that time their permanent tissue will get de-differentiated. As we have considered meristematic tissue is going to form permanent tissue by the process of differentiation. And now you have to produce permanent tissue or your permanent tissue will get uh, will form your meristematic tissue. This process is reversed. 
so differentiation and de differentiation as like you can see that oxygenation and deoxygenation oxygenation is addition of oxygen and deoxygenation is removal of that oxygen so here also first of all we have differentiated meristematic cell into permanent tissue and then after we are going to de differentiate this meristematic cell or uh, this permanent tissue into meristematic tissue so it is a reverse process so that tissue which has been formed the meristem which is formed from a permanent tissue is considered as secondary meristem and why we consider it as a secondary meristem because it was not present since the beginning of life it will be introduced or it will be formed later from the permanent tissue that's why we consider it as a secondary meristem this secondary meristem is mean for having a increase in the growth of a plant so more or they will be we'll see it later so here we can see uh, while considering lateral meristem we'll be able to see so here your secondary meristem is formed from the permanent tissue and pri primordial meristem was present in the seed while having a embryonic development primary meristem was present since the beginning of life after germination there was a presence of this meristem and the meristem which will come later which will not be present since the beginning which will come later is considered secondary meristem and this secondary meristem is going to form from permanent tissue by the process of de differentiation meristem to permanent tissue by the process of differentiation and permanent to meristem is considered as de differentiation this process we call de differentiation is there see these are the types on the basis of its origin and development now we have to consider a types of meristem on the basis of its position so here a uh, plant axis in morphology we have considered plant axis so here in plant axis you will see there are so likewise you will observe the plant so this will be considered as root and this will be considered as root tip this will be soil so here we have to consider where exactly the meristem attains its position so first of all we consider apical meristem so this apical meristem apical means terminal so here this one will present here here there will be presence of meristematic cell and here also there will be present of these are the two apex this apex is called shoot apex and this apex is called root apex the meristem which is going to present at root apex root tip apex or shoot tip apex here root tip apex and shoot tip apex. both are the apex both are the apex so the meristematic tissue which is present at the apex so either it will present at the shoot apex or root apex so here we consider it as a sam and here we consider it as a ram root apical uh, shoot apical meristem and root apical meristem sam and ram are considered for your apical meristem the meristem which is present at the shoot apex is considered as shoot apical meristem and the meristem which is present at the root apex is considered as root root apical meristem so these two meristem are considered as apical meristem and these apical meristem are going to have a function that they, they will cause a primary growth what exactly primary growth means is increase in the length of axis so this meristem is going to divide and they will cause a increase in the length so here likewise they will grow likewise means they are increasing the length of your plant axis so plant axis will grow upward with the help of shoot apex meristem and the root will grow deeply with the help of root apex meristem so you must be aware about once we will remove the tip of a plant if you you are going to detach or you are going to dissolve the shoot tip then the vertical axis will not grow vertically means the height of a plant will get stunted so your primary uh, the meristem which is considered as apical meristem which is going to present at the shoot apex and root apex is was a primary growth of plant and primary growth means increase in the length of a plant now another meristem that is intercalary meristem so this intercalary meristem is considered as the meristem which is present the meristem which is present not exactly at the apex this is apical meristem and here you observe most of the time formation of new part like when here there is a formation of leaf here there is a formation of uh, branch of a plant so the meristem which is present here exactly here this meristem uh, and where exactly there will be origination of a branch or rather leaf so this part we consider it as a node the meristematic tissue which is going to present at the nodal site is considered as a intercalary meristem intercalary so intercalary meristem is present so see this one this part is of meristem 
and here there will be presence of permanent tissue and here also there is the presence of permanent tissue the meristematic tissue which is present between permanent tissue is considered as intercalary meristem so most commonly we consider intercalary meristem is present at the nodal site node where from there will be formation of either branch or either lateral appendages that is leaf so these leaf will be formed from the axillary bud and in axillary bud the meristem which is present is considered as uh, is considered as axillary meristem but that meristem is a intercalary meristem so it is mostly uh, presumed that intercalary meristem is a remnant of your apical meristem so initially apical meristem was here and then after this meristem has uh, continuously divided and apex has attained this position so certain cell will remain here and this cell is going to form your intercalary meristem so intercalary meristematic tissue is considered as the meristem which is a remnant of which is a remnant of your apical meristem and it is present in between permanent tissue it is present in between permanent tissue this meristem is considered as intercalary meristem and both these apical meristem and intercalary meristem are considered as primary meristem means by their origin they are primary apical meristem and intercalary meristem are considered as primary meristem now we are going to see the third one on the basis of its position that is lateral meristem so so you must be aware about we consider our hands are the lateral appendages of our body so they are either they are present on the axis no they are on the either side of the axis so here also similarly so this is plant axis this one is considered as apical meristem this one is considered as intercalary meristem and the meristem which is going to present here on the lateral side of the body this meristem is considered as lateral meristem see its position is not on the axis it is on either side of the axis so this meristem is considered as a lateral meristem and see this lateral meristem by its origin it is secondary meristem lateral meristem is by its origin it is secondary meristem means it is going to form from permanent tissue so here there is a initially there is a presence of permanent tissue so this entire mass is of permanent tissue so this permanent tissue is going to get de differentiated and this part will be considered to be your secondary meristem this secondary meristem is present on uh, either side of or either either on the lateral side of the axis so we consider it as a lateral meristem so see lateral as we have consider apical meristem and intercalary meristem both are responsible for causing increase in the length of a plant so here your lateral meristem is going to divide periclinally it is going to divide periclinally and it, it will divide periclinally so it will increase the thickness of the stem so the meristem which is responsible for increase in the thickness of the stem or increase in the girth mostly we consider it as a girth or increase in the diameter of the stem is considered as a lateral meristem so apical meristem and intercalary meristem is going to cause the primary growth and your lateral meristem is going to cause a secondary growth primary growth means increase in the length of plant and secondary growth means increase in the thickness of the plant so this lateral meristem is responsible for causing secondary growth of plant means it will increase the thickness or it will increase the girth or it will increase the diameter so this lateral meristem is by its origin it is secondary meristem see we have to see that secondary meristem will form come later or will form from permanent tissue but it will not be present since the beginning of life so here also the lateral meristem will not be present since the beginning because thickness is not from the beginning first the part or a stem will increase the length and then after it will increase the thickness so that's why we consider lateral meristem by its origin is secondary meristem so primary apical meristem and intercalary meristem both are a primary meristem and your lateral meristem lateral meristem is a secondary meristem so these two meristem is going to cause a primary growth and your lateral meristem is going to cause a secondary growth. lateral meristem is going to cause a secondary growth see as your lateral meristem is going to cause a secondary growth either so it will increase the thickness so this lateral meristem is common or is present in the dicot and it is absent in the monocot so most of monocot as we have considered jowar sugar cane so they are wheat so their stem is thin and delicate so it means they don't have a secondary growth and why they don't have secondary growth because there is absence of lateral meristem so lateral meristem is only present in the dicot lateral meristem is only present in the dicot 
and your intercalary see most interesting thing about inter intercalary variation it is prominent in the grasses so we are considered grass so grazing animal will graze it so they will get uh, so likewise consider so this is about grass and the grazing animal will eat it likewise so here there is a presence of intercalary variation and this intercalary variation is again going to grow it means their apical variation has been grazed or has been eaten by the animal but their intercalary variation will again reinvent them or will again cause the growth of that particular one so intercalary variation is considered prominently in the grass and lateral variation is going to present only in the dicot plant and so dicot stem has a thick leaf and monocot stem do not have thick leaves so most of monocot stem are internally uh, hollow because of this because they don't have lateral variation so these are the types of meristematic tissue on the basis of their position so we have considered meristem on the basis of their origin that is primordial pro-meristem and embryonic meristem then primary meristem and secondary meristem and then on the basis of position we consider apical meristem intercalary meristem and lateral meristem so here apical and intercalary meristem both are by origin primary meristem and your lateral meristem is considered as secondary meristem apical and intercalary is going to cause a primary growth means increasing the length and lateral meristem is going to cause a secondary growth means increasing the thickness or increasing the girth now we have to consider the third one that is classification of meristem on the basis of its on the basis of its function so meristem basically meristem do not have to attain any function meristem do not have to attain any function meristem doesn't has any specific function it has to only divide either it doesn't has to transport the water transport the food or it doesn't has to store the food it has only function that is to divide but here the different meristematic tissue is going to form different types of tissue system in the plant body so in these we consider in a detail also see there are three different types of meristem on the basis of its function so that is protoderm or dermatogenic meristem So consider suppose this is our stem and we are going to take it section so likewise it will appear likewise here i have taken it transverse section and you are considering its top view so suppose you are considering top view of the stem so in stem derma derma means skin skin means outer layer the meristematic tissue which is responsible for formation of outer layer the meristematic tissue which is responsible for formation of outer layer of the plant body is considered as protoderm or dermatogenic tissue in outer layer there is a presence of epidermis then uh, you will observe root layers uh, rather you will observe uh, trichomes then here you will observe your stomatal wall guard cell guard cells of stomata or stomata so these are going to form these are epidermal parts they will be present on uh, as like our dermis skin so they will be present on the outer part so these outer part will be form from the meristem which we call protoderm or dermatogenic meristem this dermatogenic meristem is going to form a outer layer of the plant body now second meristem that is ground meristem or it is considered as periglem the ground meristem or periglem is going to form the entire structure see it is considered as ground so internally after this boundary whole ground is there so that entire ground will be formed by this particular tissue meristematic tissue we call it as a ground meristem so ground meristem will primarily form your cortex then there is a presence of endodermis then there is a presence of hypodermis so entirely cortex endodermis hypodermis this entire part will be formed by this meristem and which we call it as a ground meristem or periglem ground meristem or periglem so ground meristem or periglem is a meristematic tissue which will form cortex endodermis hypodermis and entirely the part inside your epidermis till the stellar part till the stellar part so stella is there which will enclose your vascular bundle and now the third one that is procambium or we consider it as a pleurom so this procambium its name itself suggests cambium so cambium is considered to be secondary meristem as we have considered in a development so pro meristem primary meristem and secondary meristem secondary meristem is also considered as cambium meristem so this procambium so which is going to form your secondary meristem they will form secondary meristem and secondary meristem which is present in between your vascular bundle 
So what is the xylem? It is phloem. So in between xylem and phloem, the meristem which is present. This meristem is called vascular cambium. The meristem which is present between your xylem and phloem or between vascular bundle is considered as a secondary meristem. This meristem we can consider as a vascular cambium. And there is another meristem which is present here in the cortex. So this region is considered as cortex. And the meristem which is present at the cortex is considered as a cortical meristem. It is called cord cambium. So we have two types of cambium. One vascular cambium and one cord cambium. The vascular cambium is the meristematic tissue which is present between vascular bundle and the cord cambium which is a meristematic tissue which is present in the cortex region. So that's why we call it as a cord cambium. So this vascular cambium and cord cambium they are a type of procambium. So this is a procambial meristem or pleuro. Means entirely they have form a tissue system of a plant body. Means your protoderm or dermatogen is going to form outer part of the body. Then your ground meristem or periblin is going to form, uh, produce entirely cortex, endodermis, hypodermis. And here your procambial meristem is going to form a secondary meristem that is vascular cambium and power cambium. These are considered as secondary. And these two secondary meristem, primarily we have considered secondary meristem is going to cause a secondary growth. So this means vascular cambium and cord cambium they are responsible for, for causing a secondary growth. Means they will increase the length of, or sorry, they will increase the thickness of the plant body. So this is all about the types of meristem. Later we have to consider a characteristic of meristematic tissue. There. So these are, so we have classified a meristematic tissue on the basis, on three different bases. That is on the basis of origin and development on the basis of its position and on the basis of its function. So later we have to consider uh, characteristic of meristematic tissue, how meristem, how exactly they will organize in the plant body. So now we have to consider characteristic of meristematic tissue. So we have considered classification of meristem on different bases. Now we have to consider characteristic of meristematic tissue. So see, most important thing about meristematic tissue, meristematic tissue is considered as it's active for its cell division. So we consider meristematic tissues or meristematic, the cells which are present in the meristematic tissue are physiologically active. So it means they are, if they are physiologically active, so they have to get divided. So we consider they are active for the division. Then meristematic tissue is mostly present in the growing parts of the plant body. It means growing part means the part where exactly there is a growth of a plant. So as like shoot tip, root tip in the, your axillary bird, primordial, uh, means they are going to produce a, uh, leaf or either lateral branches to the plant. So, meristematic tissue is going to present in the uh, growing parts of the plant. And the third one, meristematic tissue or the cells of the meristematic tissue will have primary cell wall. And the primary cell walls are primarily a cellulosic, means cellulosic. So, there is the presence of only cellulose. And these cellulosic or primary cell walls are thin and elastic. These primary cell walls are thin and elastic. The cell wall is considered to be cellulosic and they are thin and elastic. So this, such a cell wall is considered as primary cell wall and meristem will have a primary cell wall. Now we we'll consider certain characteristic of meristematic tissue. So meristematic tissue is always a living tissue. So why we have, we are going to consider it as a living? Because in your permanent tissue, certain tissues will be a dead tissue as well. So meristem will be always a living tissue. Meristematic tissue is always a living tissue. Meris uh, the cells present in the meristematic tissue are small, simple and they are called immature. They are called immature. And why we call them immature? Because they don't perform any differentiated function. And normally, we call mature one as the one which is going to have a definite function. In a regular life also, we consider the mature to one which is going to have a certain definite function. So here meristem is going to consider as immature because it doesn't have any definite function rather than the division. So, we consider meristem as a immature or you can consider it as undifferentiated also. So, as we have considered differentiation, meristem to permanent by the differentiation. The one which is going to cause a differentiation, one which is going to cause a differentiation and will form another tissue that primarily he should be undifferentiated. So, meristem is considered as undifferentiated. So, meristematic cells are immature and these cells are isodiametric. Isodiametric means their diameter will always be same. Uh, they could be oval, spherical or polygonal. So, meristematic cell 
are isodiametric, they are ovals, uh, spherical and polygonal type. Meristematic cell has a power of division. This is most important characteristic of meristematic that is they have the power of division. Then meristematic cells are compactly arranged. Meristematic cells, in meristematic tissue, the cells are compactly arranged. Means there will be no intercellular spaces in between cells. So why it is so? Because your meristematic cells are small and they are generally isodiametric, small and isodiametric. So if they are small and isodiametric, so they are not going to have uh, intercellular spaces, so they will be look compacted. Rather they are polygonal type. Suppose if they are polygonal type, then also there, there will be absence of intercellular spaces likewise. So if you, are, you arrange them in polygonal form, so then there is a absence of rather complete absence of intercellular spaces because they are isodiametric and they are small. If they are small, so there will be no issue of getting fixed inside. So we call meristematic cells are arranged compactly and there will be no intercellular spaces left in. The meristematic cells will have dense cytoplasm and prominent nucleus. Dense cytoplasm and prominent nucleus. So this will indicate a nucleus cytoplasmic ratio is going to increase. And as in cell division we have considered nucleus cytoplasmic ratio will, if nucleus cytoplasmic ratio will increase, they that uh, your cell has to get divided. And this question is mostly asked if a, a nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is responsible for causing a cell division and meristematic cells are continually in a phase of division because uh, they have a dense cytoplasm and they have a prominent nucleus. So it means their nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is high and as nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is high, they have to divide. Then meristematic cell, if meristematic will either show presence of vacuole. If vacuole remain present, then definitely it will be very much smaller and most of the time vacuole remain upset. So this gives one more characteristics to your meristematic tissue. If vacuole remain upset, this means vacuole provides mostly rigidity. If vacuole upset, then your cells are not rigid. Why meristematic cells are not rigid? Because there is an absence of vacuole. If present, then it will be very much smaller and most of the time in meristematic vacuole will remain upset. Then in meristematic tissue there is a no reserve food is present. In meristematic tissue there is a no reserve food is present because meristematic cell has to immediately divide. So then why there will be reserve food? Either? So meristematic cell uh, will not show a storage of food. We will see an uh, important characteristic about meristematic tissue is a meristematic tissue has a rapid cell division. Its rate of cell division of meristematic cell is quite high. And so, in meristem, virus will not be able to grow. If you have an infected plant, suppose we have this infected plant, this plant has been infected with a virus, and now we have to produce a new plant from this plant with the help of plant tissue culture. Then which part? Suppose here there is a branch, and you are considering this branch as a vegetative propagation. You are considering this branch for formation of new plant. Then this plant has an infection, viral infection. So this new plant will also be infected. If you have to produce virus infected plant from an infected plant, then you can only consider a meristematic tissue because meristematic tissue is virus free, always a virus free. Why? Why meristematic tissue is always a virus free? Because meristematic cell has a rapid cell division and so your virus will not be able to cope that much speed of meristem of division and so meristematic tissue will ultimately become virus free. So this is all about your meristematic tissue.